Hey guys, Liz here. Today I'm going to show you how to make the best marshmallows you've ever had in your whole life. So first we're going to start off with a bag of marshmallows and we're going to throw them in the trash where they belong. Look at these. They're like puffy clouds of deliciousness. It's coming up next on the Sugar Geek Show. Somebody go pick up those marshmallows. <laughs> All right, so before you do anything, before you even think about making marshmallows, you wanna start prepping your pan because once the marshmallows are made, they are going to want to solidify almost instantaneously. So you wanna have all this stuff ready to go. And it's funny is a few, the few videos that I watched where they were, I was trying to you know, get the process down, nobody ever talks about doing this first. And then they're like, ah! So yeah, definitely do that first. I have a nine inch uh, square pan here. I'm just using a cake pan. You can just use any kind of pan that you have. Just keep in mind that the bigger your pan is, like if you start using like a sheet pan, your marshmallows are gonna get like thinner and thinner. And I want big, tall, like square marshmallows. I'm just greasing everything up. And then I have a piece of parchment paper here that is trimmed down just so that it is ex exactly as wide as the bottom of the pan. And then you push that in there. So that's gonna be one side. Honestly, you cannot have like too much oil on this stuff. Okay, and I have my second piece of parchment paper that's gonna go, so the first one was this way, this one's gonna go this way, put that down in there, push it into the corners. And we see have this one longer side right here. We're gonna use that to fold over the top of the marshmallows and actually get them nice and flat on top. And I'm gonna pre-soak my parchment paper in oil. I'm using canola oil, which is widely regarded as the most neutral tasting oil. You could really use any type of oil, but just keep in mind, depending on what you're using, it might leave a flavor. You can use a spray oil like Pam as well, but you gotta go really heavy, be really generous, and it can also leave a flavor. Okay, now that we've got a ton of oil in there, we're gonna set this aside and this is ready to go. All right, and now we do the gelatin, combine our cold water with our gelatin and just let that absorb for 10 to 15 minutes or as long as it takes you to heat up the hot sugar. If you wanna make these marshmallows vegan, you can use equal amounts of agar agar instead of gelatin but just be aware it's not going to have the exact same texture all right so now it's time to make the sugar syrup so i have a really heavy bottomed pot here that's large enough that we're not going to have any boiling over anything avoid burns at all costs i have a thermometer and i know you're already asking me can i do this without a thermometer Technically, yes, we are cooking this sugar to 240 degrees, which is the soft ball stage. So you take out a little bit of your sugar syrup, put it into some water and you roll it in your hands. And if you can smush it and it's soft, that's accurate. But I feel like that's a technique that really, if you, you've done it before and you know what you're doing, that you can do that. But most people <laughs> have not made this before and I feel like that makes it harder so it's really going to just be easier and more accurate to just have a candy thermometer you can just get them on Amazon or at a local you know uh, baking supply like kitchen caboodle or whatever you could also just use a regular thermometer like a instant read thermometer that you use for like cooking and just put that in there be aware though it's gonna be hot you know so that's kind of the, the, the this is what this is great because you just put it in and you don't have to stick your hands in there so let's talk about our sugar. We are using granulated sugar, some water, some corn syrup, which is an invert sugar, meaning that it stops the crystals of the, the granulated sugar. It stops them from crystallizing. If you've ever tried to make like caramel or something like that, and it just goes rock hard and gets all of these little crystals in it, that's, that, that's crystallization. So this will help it from doing that. And then we're also gonna add some honey, which is also an invert sugar and it's gonna stop crystallization, but also is gonna add some flavor. If you don't wanna use honey, you can just leave the honey out and use corn syrup instead and just use corn syrup for the whole thing. And then you won't taste any honey or anything in your marshmallows. If you don't wanna use corn syrup, you could use glucose, you could use agave, you could use maple syrup, golden syrup, basically any type of sugary syrup is gonna work for marshmallows. Just be aware that it's gonna have whatever flavor the syrup that you're putting in there. We have a little bit of salt for flavor and we're making vanilla bean flavored marshmallows cause that's like a good base 
flavor to go with. You could just use vanilla extract or almond or peppermint, like orange. You can pretty much go crazy with extracts. Just keep in mind, we're gonna be adding the extract at the end of the marshmallow making. So don't accidentally add it in. Otherwise it's gonna actually taste terrible during the, the sugar cooking process. First, we're gonna add in our corn syrup and then our honey. This is organic blackberry honey here in Oregon. It's not blackberry flavored, it's made from the flowers of blackberries. It's very yummy. Then we're gonna put in our sugar. You can already hear the people now. That's a lot of sugar. Yes, that's what marshmallows are made of. And now we're gonna add in our water. And we're gonna stir this together one time and then never touch it again. That also helps to avoid crystallization. Okay, so now we're gonna bring this to a boil and I'm gonna put this lid on top here and that's gonna actually just help that water that starts to evaporate. It's gonna go down the sides of the pot and sort of just make sure that all of our granules of sugar are dissolved. While this is heating up, I'm going to de-seed my vanilla bean. If you don't have a vanilla bean, you can just use vanilla extract or vanilla bean paste is a good option. This is a really dry vanilla bean split it open and then just use the tip of your knife to scrape out all of those seeds. I'm just going to add my vanilla bean in with my salt since it's all going to be added at the same time. And I dirtied all of my little bowls. Let's be real. No matter how many tiny little bowls I buy, I just need more, more tiny bowls. Let's talk about crystallization <laughs> because you guys are sugar geeks and you like learning about all kinds of fun stuff like that. So basically what we have going on here is we have sugar crystals combined with water and we want those sugar crystals to dissolve into the water and then we want the water to evaporate, leaving us with beautifully melted sugar in a melted form. But if we start mixing that sugar up before it's fully melted, some of the unmelted sugar in its solid form will basically run into the melted sugar crystals and it will just be like get all like activated and turn back into solid crystals again. And it's, it's not even like regular sugar, it's like this grainy texture and it happens so fast that you're just like, wait, what is happening? So that's why we don't touch our sugar when it's cooking um, and we have the lid on it right now. So you can see all of the water is rising up, hitting the lid and then it's melting down the side. So that is grabbing all of those unmelted crystals of sugar and it is making sure that everything's dissolved. Another thing you can do is you can take your pastry brush, really clean, no oil or anything in it, dip it in some water and you can brush around the edges to make sure that any crystals of sugar that are cut up on the, caught up on the side of the pot are going down. I'm just gonna go ahead and put my thermometer in there just so I can help keep an eye on things. When I was in pastry school, my chef told me basically that as long as you can see steam rising out of the pot, there's water in there, which makes sense, right? If there's no water in there, you're not gonna see steam. So we wanna just keep, we, we don't even wanna like pay attention to this pot of sugar. I mean, don't walk away or anything, but it's not gonna be raising in temperature until all of the water has evaporated out of it. And it'll sit at 225 degrees until all of the water is evaporated and then it will start rising in temperature. So if you're just like doing this step and you're just like, it's stuck at 225 for the longest time, the water is evaporating. We gotta let it do its thing. If you do see some like granules of sugar on the edge, you can take your brush with some water and wash it down, but don't mix it. All right, we're at 240. Go ahead and take that off the heat and head over back to your mixer. All right, so we've got our mixer back. I'm gonna break up the gelatin a little bit. And now we're gonna start drizzling in our hot sugar syrup. We don't wanna pour the, the syrup onto the whisks, otherwise it's gonna spray everywhere. So we're trying to get it, kind of get it in between the whisks and the side of the bowl. All right, now we're gonna turn this up to high and let it mix for like 10 minutes. We're also gonna add in our vanilla bean and our salt.
This actually took about eight minutes um, with my Bosch mixer. Our uh, Bosch mixer works a little bit faster. <laughs> so until the bowl feels barely warm. All right, time to take our marshmallow fluff out of the bowl. Getting it out of these little whisks is a little bit challenging. I am using a spatula that is coated in oil as well, but unfortunately this hand is not coated in oil. <laughs> I've got my handy dandy bowl holder here. <laughs> this is so thick. Get in there. Just don't even care now. I'm just like my hands are going to get sticky. Getting this out of the, the bowl is so easy. It definitely is not going to stick to everything. <laughs> just kidding. All right. That's good. All right, some oil on my fingers, which I feel like I should have done in the first place. I'm just gonna push that out into the edges. Look at that, beautiful. And then we're gonna take our paper here and just press that down on the top and make the top nice and flat. So, feels, it, I, th I think it feels more stressful than it is. Like, oh my God, it's all sticky and I'm running out of time, but it was fine. Smooth out that top. Now we're just going to set these aside and let them firm up for at least two hours, but preferably overnight. All right, and by the magic of television, I have another marshmallow pan ready to go. Take off our parchment paper, lift that out. Look at that. So now I'm just going to dust dust our marshmallows with some powdered sugar. You really can't have too much powdered sugar on your surface. Okay, so now we're gonna figure out which way is best to cut the marshmallows. Um, we've got a long bench scraper. We have a chef's knife, which I feel like most people would have and would be wanting to use. And then I also have a bread knife. And then we're also gonna try scissors. So uh, once again, we're going to put some vegetable oil on our tools to prevent sticking. And then you also want to have a nice warm uh, damp cloth so that we can clean whatever tool we're using after each use. So I'm going to just, I could measure, I suppose, but visual spacing. Ooh, that was really easy. Also letting your marshmallows set up overnight is going to make them easier to cut. Let's try the chef's knife. One. Eh. And two. Okay, so I mean that cut just fine, but I have this spot where like, you can see where they didn't quite line up. That's kind of the only downside. All right, now we're gonna try the, the bread knife. Oh, that was fine. Good. <laughs> did you cut through? I don't know. Okay, all right, right, it did. <laughs> I think that actually the easiest thing to do was the bench scraper. And you probably are like, what if I don't have a 10 inch bench scraper? Well, you can go to Home Depot and they sell like um, tiling scrapers that are metal, that are long and they usually have like a handle on them. I'll post a link in the blog post uh, for a good option, but they make metal bench scrapers and that would work perfectly. Or you can go buy a 10 inch Fat Girls Cakes bench scraper, or you can get one from Esther Cakes. She makes long bench scrapers as well. All right, let's try these um, scissors. Look at that. Oh my God, that's so pretty. I just want to bite that. No, don't bite it. My mouth is literally salivating. All right, let's try scissors here. That works really good too. You, it might be a little bit harder to go all the way across, but for just cutting the squares, scissors works really well. I think that the secret is no matter what you use, just make sure it's oiled. All right, so let's just cut these babies. I'm gonna go right in the middle, straight down. Shunk. <laughs> Don't forget to wipe it in between. The messiest part is definitely just getting it out of the bowl. All right, so now I'm going to just roll these in some more powdered sugar. It just helps prevent sticking. 
And then you just like dust off the extra powdered sugar. Ooh, oh look, a little piece came off. Oh my God. Hold on a second. That is so freaking good. Mmm, the honey. That is unlike any marshmallow I've ever tasted in my whole life. It just dissolved. It just like went onto my tongue and it was like, gone. And we're gonna dip these in some tempered chocolate and put some sprinkles on them because we're gonna add these to our cookie box that we're gonna be shipping. Tutorials coming up soon. I hope you hit that subscribe button so you know when it comes out. Raise your hand if you wanna ship some goodies to your friends and family. Leave me a comment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chop some chocolate so that I can dip my marshmallows in it. We're gonna go ahead and do a quick temper in the microwave. So we're going to stick this in the microwave for 30 seconds, give it a mix, then do 15 second increments until our thermometer reads no higher than 90 degrees, otherwise it'll fall out of temper and everything's all melted. If you don't wanna use tempered chocolate, you can just melt down like candy melts or almond bark. It's just not gonna have as much of a chocolate flavor. If you wanna learn more about tempering chocolate, check out this video right here. So this is at 90 degrees right now, but it's not fully melted. So I'm just gonna keep mixing it until the heat from the bowl fully melts it. I'm just brushing the excess powdered sugar off the marshmallows with a makeup brush that has only been used for cake decorating. So don't be like grabbing makeup brushes out of the bathroom, that would be nasty. We don't want any of this excess powdered sugar to get into our melted chocolate because it could cause problems. <laughs> I wanna keep our, our chocolate as clean as possible. So whenever you're dipping something in chocolate, you're supposed to like kind of bounce it on the surface of the chocolate and it pulls the excess off. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna add some sprinkles because Christmas. Oh, it's so cute. I'm just gonna keep doing that. If your chocolate starts to cool down, just pop it in the microwave for about five seconds just to get it to be a little bit smoother again. Okay, I am so ready to taste one of these marshmallows. I had a little sneak peek before and it was so good, but like, oh my gosh, they're just like spongy little clouds. I haven't had one with the chocolate on it yet. Oh my God. I mean, it's just, it just melts in your mouth. It just dissolves. There's no chewing. Let's taste the regular marshmallow. All right, so this is a bag of regular marshmallows. So just feeling wise, obviously, these are a lot firmer. I'm gonna taste it just to compare. I would say the major difference is this doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like I have something in my mouth, but like there's no flavor. And you definitely have to chew it. Like it's more just chewier. It's not bad. This is definitely what I, I imagine a, you know, a marshmallow tastes like. But this, it actually has tons of flavor from the vanilla bean. Mmm. And there's just no chewing. Like, now we need some graham crackers and a campfire or some hot chocolate. You could just put this in a, a mug of hot chocolate. All right, guys, I'm Liz Merrick. That is how you make your very own homemade marshmallows. If you like this video, be sure to check out the hot chocolate cocoa bomb recipe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!